Joining us now for more, Valerie Jarrett, the former senior advisor to President Obama. She's also the author of Finding My Voice, When the Perfect Plan Crumbles, the Adventure Begins. Valerie, it's good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Wilfred. It's a pleasure to be with you both. So as I just outlined, we're mixed signals on trade relationships right now, uncertainty around COVID-19 with rising cases across this country. What would you be advising businesses to do in this environment? Well, when I was the point person for the business community in the Obama administration, the one word that I heard uh, over and over and over again was certainty. Uh, the business community craves that. And in a time when we are in an uncertain time with this global pandemic, with the challenges that we're facing with trying to rebuild our economy at the same time as we have tensions and racial tensions spilling over. There's a lot going on in our country that causes uncertainty. And so I think what the business community wants from their leaders is to provide as much certainty as can consistency as possible so that they can figure out how to dig ourselves out of this very, very deep ditch that we're in. Um, but but uh, when it comes to trade, at least, uh, Valerie, yes, there's been a lot of uncertainty, no doubt about that, over the last uh, uh, couple of years. But uh, to some extent, has that been warranted uh, when you see some of the clashes with China? Do, do you ever look back and think we, we should have perhaps pushed a little harder on China ourselves? Well, look, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But what you referred to earlier in this piece is within one week to see a reversal of positions. And that kind of a swerve is not what I think is good for our businesses, and it certainly isn't good for our reputation around the world. We should be speaking with one voice from the administration. It should be consistent. If facts change, of course, you might have to change course, but nothing changed this week that would have caused the kind of reversal we just saw. Clearly, President Trump has already begun his campaign. He's, he's holding his rallies. He's still hitting the trade theme and the, and the trade fight pretty hard. And there is a lot of angst right now, particularly against China for COVID-19, uh, for the economy. D does Vice President Biden, Valerie, need a, a better China narrative? No, listen, I think Vice President Biden is just what our country needs right now. Not only is he going to bring us together internally within our country, as opposed to separating us and, and polarizing our country with divisive, oftentimes racist language, uh, but I also think that his reputation with world leaders is outstanding. And I'm looking forward to the United States getting back to a position where we are that beacon of hope, that democracy that we can hold out as a model, and that we are as good as our word, and that we appreciate the important role that our allies play, and that the challenges that we face right now cannot be attacked in isolation. We need global cooperation. And I think Vice President Biden, with his long track record and experience both in the Senate and as eight years as vice president, is the perfect person to help heal our country and improve our status around the world. What, what about on taxes, uh, Valerie? I mean, r increasing taxes is never popular, but uh, would it be the right thing to do in, in certain areas, maybe reverse the corporate tax rate cut or, or potentially increase capital gains uh, taxes slightly, given when, when you look at the stock market, which has rebounded so aggressively and, and, and the economy perhaps still lagging behind? Well, look, I think the economy, the foundations for this economy began as we came out of the recession of 2009 and the steps that the Obama administration took to, as I said earlier, get us out of this ditch. I think what Vice President Biden will do is to look at all of the tools available to him, including the tax code, to say, what are we going to do to increase opportunity here in America for more Americans to have good paying jobs? What do we do to make sure that we retool our workers for the jobs of the future? And what do we do to make sure that our tax system is fair and equitable? And I do think that the exorbitant tax relief that was given to corporate America uh, under President Trump is not something that made good sound sense. It wasn't even something that the corporate community was looking for. So I think Vice President Biden has a fresh opportunity as we rebuild to look at what are all of the levers that he can turn at the federal level, working with Congress, that will rebuild a new economy, not simply go back to where we were before. Do you think that if he does win, that he should push to roll back SALT uh, and, and help some of the states that were hit hardest by COVID? Look, I think those are all good questions, and I leave it to Vice President Biden and his economic team to figure it out. But I, what I have heard him say quite clearly is we need to rebuild in a way that's fair for everybody. So, for example, many of the states that have been hit hard by COVID, we have to figure out how to rebuild those economies. 
but we also have to look at the health disparities that have been laid bare as a result of COVID. And what do we do to ensure that all Americans have access to quality health care and close those, um, those gaps that we've seen, particularly in the African-American community? Um, Barry, I wanted to ask quickly about uh, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, and clearly it's, it's been a uh, jarring couple of months, and we could assess uh, all day long uh, exactly uh, how the last couple of months have been handled. But, but I wonder whether you look back, uh, of course, this is a movement that has been going for, for a long time, uh, and wonder whether more progress on it could have been made during the Obama administration. Well, look, we certainly brought this issue front and center. We had a Justice Department that looked at the tensions between police and communities of color and went in to see if there were patterns and practice of discriminatory behavior. That's a tool that is no longer used by this Justice Department. We brought 25 pattern and practice of investigations uh, during President Obama's watch. We had tools in our Justice Department to help implement the 21st Century Task Force report that provided a blueprint, a roadmap for what local law enforcement agencies could do to try to build trust between themselves and communities of color. And unfortunately, over the last three and a half years, all of that hard work has been abandoned. And I, I do think, as you alluded to, Wilfred, that many of the tensions that are building up now and coming to the surface have been building for generations. So this is not something that necessarily has a quick fix. But the good news is this. I think that we have seen people mobilize in the streets with demonstrations mostly peaceful. We've seen cities and states already take action to change laws, whether it's banning the chokehold or the no-knock no warrants, looking at how are we training our officers to make sure that their backgrounds uh, pass, that they are ready to uh, uphold themselves to the high standard that we should have for law enforcement, that we're not asking them to do things that are outside of their scope, that we're teaching them de-escalation, we're looking at implicit bias. There's so many things that we could do. And then the other heartening uh, I think data point is that the business community is not only had a wake up call about these tensions between police and communities of color, but they're now challenging themselves to say, well, what's our role in this? If we believe that diversity is a strength, do we have a culture and practices of inclusion? What more could we do with our buying power to open up opportunities for those who have been left behind? And that challenge, I think, will have a ripple effect around our country as well. So I think it's heartening to see that the vast majority of Americans in the polling I have looked at support the Black Lives uh, Movement, recognize that it's fighting for inequities uh, that have been historic, and uh, we're coming together in a way that I have not seen in my lifetime, and I'm old enough to remember the Civil Rights Movement. And as Herculean as that effort was, it was nothing. It paled in comparison to what we're seeing on the streets of our country and the actions that elected officials are beginning to take in response, there is no quick fix to this. This is something that has to mm -hmm. uh, take to heart and, and put into practice, both in terms of preventing discrimination, but also changing the hearts of America. And I think that soul searching is underway. And the question is, is this an inflection point or the beginning of a turning point? And I am feeling optimistic that it is actually the beginning of a turning point.